<laughs> Unreal. You can see the gaff top chasing that speckled trout. Ah! Oh! That was wild, wild, man. Speckled trout 34. Ah, Mandeville. A great place to go sailing, walk on the lakefront, enjoy a bike ride, or sip on a cool brewski. It's no wonder that speckled trout love coming here. So, I decided to make you guys a brand new YouTube video catching speckled trout off the shores of this wonderful lakeside town. goodness and they are hammering and they are hammering so good right now all right so when you see a good big flock of diving birds like this one right here what you want to do is get up wind of them all right now when you do fish diving birds you don't want to fish like two or three like uh, like some kind of weak sauce amount of diving birds like two or three birds are just looking in the water and they're not confidently picking something out of it or confidently diving you want a lot of birds that are confidently diving that's what we have here so let's get in there let's catch some fish now i prefer to stay away a little bit but uh, uh, like not get right on top of them, even though I, I can be, I think it's okay to get aggressive with them, especially if there's other boats out. But as you can see, there are no other boats out because I can find my own fish. It's an amazing thing. Hooray me. Uh, let's get in here. Let's just start making casts now. I got a double rigged four horsemen on there and I'm just hoping a double rig some spackle trout. That would be amazing. Now as I'm doing this, these fish do move. It's not because a shrimp move. I think the shrimp are just spread out and then the fish are moving and as they do they jump shrimp in front of them. So sometimes you gotta stay on that trolling motor and you gotta you gotta chase these fish. You can't you can't just anchor or spot lock or, or, or drift. You got to move with a purpose. There we go. Man, nice speckled trout. Nice trout. Whoo, that's what we came here for. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Kind of trout you just don't even need to measure. And we are keeping fish today. Welcome to the club, buddy. Speckle trout number one. I just dropped the clicker over the side of the boat because I'm a dummy. There we go. All right. And cast right back out. Like, see how the birds moved off to the right? And we're gonna we're gonna reposition on them. We're gonna chase them with the trolling motor, but it's still it's still in your interest to cast right back out to where you caught that fish because there could still be more there that are sitting there looking. Remember, remember there's a three things. The birds, the shrimp, and, and the fish. There may not be any shrimp right here, but there could be fish. But now I didn't catch anything on that cast. I'm not gonna sit there and dawdle with it all day long. I'm just gonna go to where these birds are going crazy. I think that the number one thing that screws up people on their fishing trips is that they, uh, they, they, they become victims of the time vampire. They spend too much time doing unproductive things at unproductive spots rather than just moving with the purpose of finding biting fish in the first place. There we go. Alright, so I don't know if this guy's going to be 12 inches or not. Oh no, not a throwback. No, he's short. Oh, 
Oh, nice fish. Look at that. And then look. What did we see this fish coughing up here? If you look inside his mouth, you see there's little hairs? There's little hairs. You see there's a little antenna. Number two. Right there in front of the boat. <laughs> Auto release. Right into the cockpit though. I'm alright with that. Whew. Nice speckle trout. <clears throat> These fish run my life, I tell you what. They're kind of those are nice trout, but they're hitting like 10 inch white trout. It's 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 kind of it's kind of weird. Right in front of the boat. This can't be a trout. If it's got to be a gaff top. All right. Well, first trash fish of the day, and gaff tops just they just come with the territory, man. So let me show you how it is you properly handle a gaff top. Because do you want to catch trash fish or do you want to catch speckled trout? Yeah, big old hammer gaff top. Imagine that. So what you do is you just whoop his little butt and get him to the boat as fast as possible. Get that catfish flipper, dehooker on him, bang. Get them off the line, clean your line, and get back out there. Don't sit there and dawdle with them all day long. I tell you what, if there's one thing that drives me crazy, is when there's a good speckled trout bite, someone's just taking their time. No, we're not doing that. Beat that fish up, get them off the hook, and then get back out there. This is the difference between catching like a limit of fish and just catching a handful. Mmm, right there. Most people will still be messing with that gaff top. I have another trout. That's a one, two, three, four. Speckle trout number four. Get that bait back out there. And then uh, do clicker business. Yeah, three, four. Come on, there he is. There he is. Mm, I don't know if this guy, he might keep. Yeah. And bang. Speckle trout number five. Get the bait back out there where that bird is diving in the water. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he came back for it. Man, absolutely smashed it that time. Kick him down to the cockpit. Keep going. Come on, man, I see them swiping at the bait. It's, it's like they don't want to commit to it. It's like as soon as they see it, it's like they see another shrimp, but then they go for that. And you just gotta leave it there and let them fight over it. I had two on and one of them came off. Just kick them to the bottom of the boat. They're gonna die anyway. You're catching two at a time when you're hooking up with two at a time in front of the boat. You don't sit there and dawdle around with the fish. Boom, you get back out there. Keep working that cork. Let them think that's where the shrimp's at. Because there is. It's just fake. With a hook in it. Mm. 
There we go. Ooh, I might have two on. Oh, I think I got two. First, first double, double rigs fish of the day. Yes, and they're fighting each other and they're going nuts. And it's awesome. And this is South Louisiana speckled trout fishing during the fall, baby. Boom. Oh, I love this. Oh. Okay, I need to put some fish away. You get down there. I need to do some clicker business. I, I got to or else we're just going to end up. <sighs> okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine fish. Awesome. Okay, all right. Four horsemen, you're staying. You're staying on. You're just, you're catching. You're doing the good stuff. Let's get the cork back out there and the cork is deployed and clicker business. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Awesome. And we're hooked up. Oh, and it came off. Now we're right now we're kind of like drifting in the middle of it. I'm not gonna fire up the trolling motor or anything. I'm just gonna just gonna go with it. These fish will eat at the side of the boat if you're not making noise. It feels like two again. Ah, just one. This water's so clean I can just see him way out there coming to the boat. Nice. Bummer, dude. That was a nice trout. I I will release any speckled trout over 20 inches. I don't think it was 20 inches, but if we pretend it was 20 inches and, you know. Something else I would like all of you to observe right now, there's no other boats around here. And let me tell you something about these fish, about speckled trout number 10, is nobody said, hey Devin, this is where to go. I don't ask people where to go. And the reason I don't is because, because I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I can find my own fish. And I'm more than happy to teach you how to do this as well inside my uh, uh, two brand new courses inshore fishing 101 and fall fish location details how to do this where to go when to go how to gauge the conditions what tackle to use let's put that cork right where i saw that shrimp jump out the water and yeah uh the fishing action has died down this does not mean it's over so while i'm sitting here still casting anyway because you can't catch a fish if your line isn't in the water right the other thing I'm doing, besides talking to a camera by myself out on the water, is looking for the next flock of birds. There's going to be another one somewhere around here, and you might have to strain your eyeballs a little bit. Might have to do that, but I am looking. Just being patient. Because that little flurry right there got us... Well, did I click in that 10th one? Speckle trot number 10 got us 10 fish man if we we do that again in the half we're we're at 25 we're done so just wait just be patient and just keep an eye out five minutes later bang over there okay yes another giant thing of birds let's secure this rod with a quickness put it down it's always good to strap these down so they don't because we're gonna we're gonna move, we're gonna haul ass.
again, we're gonna get upwind of them. And I'm actually gonna get a little close. I'm gonna get a little aggressive with it. And notice that it's not like, you know, one or two birds. Note how it's a whole bunch of birds. And then when you look at the graph, what do we see? There's lots and lots of bait just everywhere, man. Uh, it's a whole lot of them. We're not trying to get bits and pieces and scraps here and there. This is Louisiana fall fishing. We're going home with a prom queen today. That's the mentality we're using. Uh, and, and they, you know what? And they just kind of dissipated, but there is another set kind of working over there. So it, it just, it just is what it is. Sometimes you get on them and then they just, it's over. Oh, I just heard a trout eat a shrimp behind me and I'm screwing around with stupid gaff top. And I know it's a gaff top. Oh my goodness. Hang on. There's, there's a gaff top and a trout on it. Well, I know it's a gaff top because it's running towards the boat and digging down. Yeah. Okay. So let's get the, you cannot make this up right now. You see the gaff top and the speckled trout? <gasps> That's what I get. See, if I wasn't trying to film that, if I was just focusing on getting the fish, I would have just gotten the fish in the boat. I wouldn't have even messed with it, but it's hard filming these trips, guys. So it goes to show that when I say that, like you really need a fine biting fish in the first place and I find them, like the, the bite really is that good. Dude, as soon as it hit the water, bang. Come on. I gotta get a little bit of redemption here for the fish I just lost. And yeah, this is digging down. Uh, two fish. I didn't mean for that to happen. Yeah, one came off, not good. But nice fish though. Nice speckled trout. Mmm. It's like three fish I lost now. Number 11. Bang, I'm hooked up already. Oh. Two speckle trout again. That's what it's all about right there, boy. Get back in there. Man, these are nice, fat speckled trout. 12 and 13. And they're just out in the open. And they're just out in the open. It's so weird. Because I've come out here and fished everything else around here and just haven't done well. Yeah, you definitely keep. I saw him come up and hit it. Un, un, wild, absolutely wild. <sighs> mm, look at that fat speckled trout. Uh.
There we go, man. I think I got two now. Kind of let the cork loiter there for a little bit. Try, no, I didn't. I did not get that second one, but this one does look like a keeper. Bang. That's how you do it. Oh yeah. Speckle trout 16. There we go, man, right there in front of the boat. And no birds are diving right there. I was just trying anyway before I repositioned the boat. I thought we were about to have a fourth, a fourth fish fly out the boat. All right. Speckled trout 17. This is the part of the YouTube video you don't see where I have to swap out batteries and there's fish just going crazy behind the boat. And I can't film it because this camera's down right now. I can't fish. All right, casting right where those birds are looking in the water. We're close enough. There we go. What's this? Whew, coming to the top. If it comes to the top, it's, it's a speckled trout. Gaff tops don't come to the top. They dig down and run towards the boat. Whew, okay. Bang. Speckle trout number 18. And just casting right where those birds are looking in the water. Hooked up right away, nice. And now I'm mentally keeping that spot in mind, you know, as the boat's moving, because I want to get right back out to that exact spot. That's where another speckled trout's going to be. Hopefully, ideally anyway. And that's the keeper. And of course the double rig's tangled up. It's one of the things I hate the most about a freaking double rig. It can be a time waster. This can't be a, these can't be a speckled trout. This can't be a, it's a nice trout. Oh, it's a nice trout. Oh man. Get that bait right back out there. Unreal. I saw him come up and hit it. right in front of the boat. <clears throat> nice fish. <sighs> All right. Oh, let's see what we got here. So we have uh, da, 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 20 fish in the cooler. So that's 21, 22, and 23. Two more. I think I can do two more. 21, 22, 23. Things all fogged up. Okay. <sighs> Feels good, man. It's just... Uh, it's like the rod just loaded up. I mean, I watched the cork take off, but it didn't like fly underwater, just kind of went off at an angle. What do we have here? Nice speckled, oh my goodness, nice speckled trout. 
<laughs> oh yes, this is, this is Louisiana fall fishing. This is Louisiana fall fishing. If you're not doing this, then you're not fall fishing. Oh, 24. I'm gonna have to stand on that cooler later. Let's reposition the boat real quick. Oh, it came off. It's like these birds are just sitting and then there could be fish here. About to fucking scream at these fucking cameras. You tried are gonna do me like this on speckle trout number 25, aren't you? This drives me nuts. All right, we're just gonna take a ride. I'm gonna, ant well, I'm gonna untangle this cork. So annoying. Come on, give me one more fish. I'm still just looking at the horizon. There's got to be more out here. I mean, th this is this has been pretty strong and consistent. And the birds are still out here. So there's got to be more. I just wish that some of these birds would stop sitting and just get up and go look. Yeah, they just saw something, and I saw it too. Ooh, there we go. Oh, it's a nice trout. You can just see more shrimp jumping. Oh, it's a nice trout. Oh my goodness. No, there's two, there's two. Unreal. One of y'all is going to get to. What the heck? There's like a. It's a bull red chasing him. Which is actually pretty normal. All right. One lives, one dies. One of these is speckle trout number 25, the other one's 26. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch it at this guy. And they're just. Uh, 25. Back in the water you go, bud. Bam! And that's 25 speckled trout. And that's a wrap, folks. So let's get home. Let's clean some fish and let's go over what it was that made today successful. Okay, so in the beginning of the video, I was joking that speckled trout liked Mandeville because of sailboat races, riding bicycles, and drinking beer. While the Mandeville Lakefront does have those things, that's not why the trout were there. Those speckled trout were there because of specific conditions that happened during the fall fishing pattern. Specifically, they return to less salty water after their spawn, and they feed mostly on white shrimp because that is what is most widely available during fall. Obviously, I know this and understand how to capitalize on it. Another thing that made this fishing trip happen was my ability to gauge the wind and sea state. As you can see, Lake Pontchartrain is a big place easily affected by wind from any direction. If you want to fish an open part of the lake, like I did on this fishing trip, then you need to be able to accurately guesstimate what the wind and water are going to do. I recommend avoiding land-based forecasts and use marine-based forecasts like WindFinder and NOAA's Coastal Marine Forecast. How to use these tools and more are detailed inside my course, Fishing Trip Planning Resources. Secondly, I was able to find these diving birds because I understand the primary forage of speckled trout during any season of the year. During fall, that's white shrimp. These shrimp use tidal highways to exit the marsh for their own spawn, and that's where you can count to find speckled trout. When the shrimp are gone, you can bet that speckled trout will change how and where they feed. In the next 45 days or so, there will be anglers who will move to the next primary forage, and anglers who keep fishing shrimp that aren't there. 
Take a wild guess who's going to catch fish. Last but not least, I did a good job of finding biting fish in a place they're not likely to get pressured. I say this all the time and it's true. When it comes to catching limits of fish, things like lure color and live bait are not most important. What's most important is finding the fish to begin with. This is what Inshore Fishing 101 is centered on. That's because if I can get you on biting fish, then you won't have to worry about everything else. But I didn't just find biting fish, I found them in a place no one else thought to look. And the way I did this is by taking time to go on fishing trips where the goal is not to catch fish. Instead, the goal is to learn as much as possible about what's happening in an area. What I do is take a ride poke around, scan things with sonar, and cover water to learn as much as possible, especially anything new. And look at what that homework did for me. It got me three consecutive days of catching fish that weren't pressured by anyone else. For three days, I went out there and caught a total of 95 keeper speckled trout and left them biting every time. Believe me, I tried to get family and friends to come out, but they were just too busy. <laughs> I know, that's what I thought too. But these fish were there until the conditions changed. Then they went somewhere else. During their stay in Mandeville, these fish were not pressured by charter captains. They were not known by local YouTubers or the rest of the inshore fishing community. And that's probably because, like I said earlier, most people, even some fishing guides, are not capable of finding their own fish. They just don't know how. Instead, they fish the same spots they always have or rely on their fishing buddies to tell them where to go. This works for most people and that's fine, but if you want to catch fish like I do in my videos, then you need to use what I know. Should you be so kind as to join my membership, I strongly recommend introducing yourself in the LAFB Elite community, then getting started with Inshore Fishing 101. And that's because the community is full of like-minded anglers and Inshore Fishing 101 is the foundational knowledge upon which all other fishing knowledge builds on top of. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you inside LAFB Elite.